Hey game makers, I'm Pixelated Pope, and welcome to my first video tutorial series. We are going to be implementing steering behaviors in Game Maker Studio. I consider this to be a somewhat advanced topic, and as such, this is not a beginner's tutorial. I expect that you are comfortable working in GML and don't need basic Game Maker functionality explained. It's also a plus if you're familiar with the concept of vectors, as we're going to be using a lot of them. Uh, so what is the steering behavior? Steering behavior is a term, I believe, coined by Craig Reynolds in his 1999 paper, Steering Behaviors for Autonomous Characters. I've uh, maybe linked the paper in the description below. When it comes right down to it, though, steering behaviors are a way for your AI to move about their environment in a convincing way. It relies on three basic ideas. First, your game object is capable of moving forwards, backwards, and turning left and right. While this immediately draws comparisons to vehicles like cars and planes, it actually works surprisingly well for people, animals, and just about any other thing you might want to move around. Second, your object has somewhere it wants to go and a speed it wants to get there at, a desired velocity. This desired velocity vector will be the result of every steering behavior script we write. And third, your object has two values, max speed and max force. First is easily explained. This is the fastest your object can move forward. Simple. The other is a little harder to explain, but is really the key element in why steering behaviors are so convincing. Max force limits how efficiently your object can transition from its current velocity to its desired velocity. With infinite or at least very high max force, your character can change direction in an instant and align its current velocity with its desired velocity very easily. With a lower max force, the object can only move its current velocity towards its desired velocity so much every step, resulting in a smooth, natural curve. So while there are hundreds of articles and videos about implementing steering behaviors in just about every language under the sun, I couldn't find anything for GameMaker. So for the past few weeks, I've been working through a tutorial series on tutsplus.com, which I've, again, hopefully linked in the description below. It's not written in GML, but the author does a great job of explaining steering behaviors, and he has a lot of pictures and diagrams to help explain everything. This video is the result of me translating that tutorial into GML, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to read through that tutorial after watching this video to see if he fills in some of the gaps in your understanding. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I always skip to the end of tutorial videos to see if the results are worth the time investment, so let me save you the trip and show you what we'll accomplish by the end of the video series. So in this demonstration, the ships are using steering behaviors to track my mouse cursor. They are also avoiding collision with each other and trying to steer around any of the obstacles that are in uh, the environment. So as, I, as they close in, they come to a stop on my mouse cursor. And then they go chasing after it again. So this is all surprisingly simple once you have your basic steering behaviors in place. And as you can probably see, it's not perfect. We got some jittering going on. Uh, you know, steering behaviors are not a replacement for things like pathfinding uh, and really intelligent, you know, collision avoidance. Uh, but this, you know, with what I've got built in, it at least tries to not run into everything. Uh, so it it ends up being pretty convincing, uh, and with a little bit of tuning, it could look flawless. So let's get started. Open up a new project in GameMaker Studio. And I'm going to call this project Steering Behavior Tutorial and create it. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that I've been talking a lot about velocity. Being able to work with vectors is key to implementing steering behaviors. But as you may have noticed, GameMaker does not natively support vectors. Luckily, the Mojo Collective has us covered. TMC released a vector marketplace asset that is available for free. I've linked to the forum thread in the description below. Uh, now, 
no offense to iCurd or any other Mojo Collective people, but I cannot stand the naming convention for their scripts. Having to type TMC underscore before every single vector call was exhausting. So in my project, I renamed everything. There were also a bit of missing functionality and a couple of bugs that I know iCurd has fixed, but he is apparently having trouble pushing out an update for the asset. So with that in mind, I'm providing you with a pack of scripts with the bugs fixed, features added, and naming convention changed. So import those scripts and let's get started. So can I create a group for these? Add existing scripts. Desktop, GM stuff. Let's do my tutorial, vector scripts. There we go. There's all the scripts we need to work with vectors. Uh, let's see, we're gonna need a sprite. and center the origin. Then we're gonna need a room. That's all well and good. Let's keep it at 30 for now. And of course we're gonna need an object. Object ship, set our sprite, and let's create a create event. Block of code. These are our properties. So first we need our position in vector format. Vectors are really just one dimensional arrays. Value zero has the dimension of the vector, so you never need to use that value. Value one is your X and value two is your Y. So when we type this, position equals vec two X, Y, what you're really getting is this. Position zero equals two position one equals X and position two equals Y. Pretty simple. We also need a couple other variables. We need to instantiate our velocity. And right now we're not going anywhere, so zero, zero. And our steering. Velocity will store our, X, our current x and y speed, while steering will represent our desired x and y speed, or how we want to change our current velocity to be more towards our desired velocity. Uh, so you'll see how that comes into play a little bit later. Uh, we also need the two values we talked about, max speed, and we're going to set that to 5, and max force, which we're going to equal 1. Uh, we'll come back and mess with these values in a bit but these should work for now. Next, we need to set up the backbone of our steering behavior system. So let's create a step event and drop our block of code in there. All right, so first step for anything pretty much is we need to zero out our steering. So steering equals vec two, zero, zero. Uh, since each step we are going to recalculate our steering uh, force from scratch, it's important to reset it. Uh, let's see, then we'll calculate desired steering vector. Uh, this is where we'll do the actual work, but we're missing a piece, so we'll just leave this comment here for now. Once we've calculated our steering force, we will store it in our steering variable and then apply it. We do this simply by adding our steering vector to our velocity vector. So velocity equals vect add velocity and steering. Now we need to update our position based on our current velocity. Once again, it's as simple as adding the two vectors together. So our position equals vect add position velocity. Finally, since we aren't using built-in variables like h speed and v speed, we need to manually set our x and y position. So x equals position one and y equals position two. So we're just pulling the x and y values out of the position vector and setting our x and y equal to them. So the backbone is set up. That's not going to do much for us right now. 
we need to actually calculate the desired steering vector. So make a new script and call it SBSeq. SBSeq. And we're going to pass three arguments, x, y, and weight. This will return a vector for the steering direction uh, to go towards the given point. So first we need our target's position in a vector. So create a new vec2 using arguments 0 and 1. Var target equals vec2, argument 0, argument 1. So we got our target. Uh, you might notice we're also passing a third variable that will be important when we start stacking behaviors on top of each other. For now, just store it as weight. So var weight equals uh, argument two. So here's where things start getting a little complicated. To get our desired vector, we first need to subtract our position from our target's position. We then need to limit that vector based on our max speed. Let me write out the code and then we'll go back through it. So var desired velocity equals vect scale r vect subtract uh, target position max speed. Okay, so that's a bit of a mouthful. Let's look at the inside part first. Vect subtract target position. So that's part right here. That will subtract our position from our target's position. So got a little handy chart to help you visualize that. So if my position is 50-20 and my target's position is 75-10, then the vector is 25-10. So 25 over, up 10. Uh, once we have our vector, we need to scale it. Vect scale r will take a vector and keep the overall direction the same, but change the length to a second argument. So we take that 25, negative 10 vector, which has a length of 26.93, and we change the length to our max speed, which we set as 5. This forces our desired velocity to be constrained by our max speed, which can be useful. Now, all we need to do is get this vector out of the script. So we'll write a little return call, vect mult r vect subtract desired velocity, velocity and weight. Whew. Okay, another mouthful. Uh, let's look at the inside bit first. For the seek behavior, we need to know how much we need to change our velocity to line up with our desired velocity. So we subtract our current from our desired. If our current velocity equals our desired velocity, then the total change we'll apply to our current velocity would be zero. As you can see at the end there, we are finally using that weight argument. Vect multer will multiply the past vector by the real past is the second argument. So if our weight is one, nothing changes. If our weight is two, it will double the x and y values of our vector. Again, this won't be really important until we have more than one behavior to worry about. Okay, so we got our script written. Let's go use it. Back to the step event. Okay, so this is where we want to calculate our steering. So to do that, we just do this. Steering equals vect add steering sbseq. So that script we just wrote. And we're going to make it seek my mouse position. So mouse x, mouse y, and give it away to 1. It doesn't really matter right now because we only have one steering behavior we, right now. So let's test it. Let's throw an instance of our object in the room and run. There we go. 
doesn't look very good, but we'll fix that in a second. Let's mess with some of our values and uh, kick up the max speed and try again. So let's kick up max speed to 10. Oh, you know, let's kick it up to 20. Now, with the higher speed, you may notice that our ship is just moving towards the cursor. Nothing particularly special about that. That's because we are not doing the one thing that makes steering behaviors so cool, limiting the effect the steering force can have on the current velocity. Back to the step event. So right after we get our force, we need to limit them. So steering equals vect truncate steering max force. So that's where max force comes into play. Vector truncate will check the length of a force and limit it to a max length. It's like clamp, but for vectors. So we're going to clamp steering force to our max force. So when we add our steering force to our velocity, it can't make as big of a change as it wants to. We need to make one other change here. Using vec truncate. We're going to do the same thing here, only instead use max speed. We also use truncate to make sure our new velocity isn't higher than our max speed. So check this out. There we go. That is much more impressive. Let's go mess with our values a little bit more and see what we can make this look like. Let's try 10 and 0.5. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. But there's one big problem. Our ship doesn't turn. Uh, there's a lot of ways we can handle this, but for now, let's just do a quick fix. So back to the step event. Down underneath everything, we're going to adjust our image angle. Image angle equals vect direction velocity. There we go. Uh, obviously, there's an issue with tight turns and the way uh, we are setting our image angle, but we are well on our way to having convincing, natural AI movement. So next time, we're going to add another ship and make it run away from the mouse cursor, and we'll fix this ship so that it doesn't just keep slingshotting around its target location. Uh, hopefully, this was helpful. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below or on r slash gamemaker. Thanks for watching.